Uh, cool. Welcome, everybody. My name is Deb Shell. I am the founder of Find Calm Here. We have conversations on a weekly basis talking about how to find calm in the chaos of regular life, um, how to make daily habits happen, and um, just building really great uh, ways to deal with stress. And today, we're going to talk about finding calm with strength. We have Allison here, and she's going to hop on here and, and share with us some of her tips and all kinds of other things. So go ahead. Hey, guys. So I'm Allison. I'm currently living in Eugene, Oregon. So on, on, I don't know if anyone, uh, Joe, you're kind of mid in, Midwest Western area, right? So, yeah, I know usually I feel like I'm a loner out out on the West Coast on a lot of calls. So it's it's awesome to be here with you guys. Um, I'll start with uh, we'll start with uh, some get into some questions, and then as we move through this, I'll you know kind of trickle my story and kind of how I loop all this into what how I've gotten to where I am. So um, let's let's start. So part of this is going to be like kind of question answer. Uh, if you have something to write with and you like to journal, I encourage you to do that for some of these questions. If not, just you can sit or you can open up the chat and just write things there and later do what you'd like with them. Um, oh, yay, journal, love it. Um, awesome, Carolyn. Uh, and then if uh, if you'd like to share at any point when I ask to share, uh, we'll just open up the chat and you can just drop your answers in the chat. Uh, and if you choose not to, that's fine as well. Um, and then towards the end, we will do um, a little circuit work, like a little circuit exercise together. And um, I've got something prepared, but we might tweak it a little bit with what everyone wants to do. So, so let's start with, so when we say, uh, what does finding calm mean to everyone? So, um, so take a second right now, and I want you to just write down a few either keywords or a little statement to what does find calm mean to you? So go ahead and write that down. I saw Nick shared in the chat, so you can you guys can sh either write down or you can share in the chat as well too. In the chat either. Give everyone a second. everybody how's everybody doing you guys good thumbs up good awesome all right so let's if you anyone would like to come on you can feel free to unmute yourself or i can read some things from the chat nick says peace of mind donna says balance of work play work, oh, sorry work rest play mo uh, move uh, priscilla says finding calm means doing activities and practices that bring me peace and joy yeah absolutely um, I said balance in all the things that like all my projects and like feeling that I have time, like a balance of time to, that gives me a lot of calm. Yeah. It doesn't happen often. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I like this centered and balanced. Awesome. Well, let's, let's uh, work with that word balanced a little bit then. So, so what does, what does balance actually mean? Because uh, let's talk about balance in terms of how things all work together. Like uh, we're probably all juggling lots of hats or um, have a lot of different roles. So what does ba being balanced mean to you guys? And we can either if you want to pop on or um, drop in the chat. Because I like that word. I like the word balanced. Uh, I'll jump in here, yeah. uh, Allison. I think a lot about this. Um, and I think it's mostly about being able to switch between different areas or different tasks with a sense of calm, with a sense of peace, and not like this anxiety and noise that comes with you know, not feeling centered or not feeling balanced. Yeah, I like that. Thanks, Nick. Exactly. 
So how do we kind of stay in balance then? So um, I like what Nick said, where we kind of can flow between different things without stress. So what do we do to kind of cope with when things are more stressful or we're feeling like one task is a little heavier than another? How do you guys cope as you kind of move through things or move between? I can share just letting everybody know, I feel structure is what helps me um, having, you know, when you're talking about balance, you're talking about calm, it's, it's actually building a structure so that I have a plan. Um, because when I, when things, you can have a plan and then be adaptable if the plan changes, but like just having the plan uh, just makes me feel calm. So having that structure in place, um, knowing that I'm going to have a time blocking my day um, or set, you know, some of those um, theming of days. Sometimes I think I'm going to start trying the theming of days, uh, you know, going forward um, because sometimes time blocking is a little hard when I have Zoom calls <laughs> throughout the day. So I think uh, that's been something that has helped me for sure. Does anybody else relate to that, like structure? Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think structure, it's like music, right? You have the underlying structure, but then you can play jazz on top of it, right? So you can kind yeah. of dance with it. Um, and I, th I like the idea of structure. I also want to offer um, structure can be like those habits and routines and self-care, the things that you do so that when you have to be adaptable, you can be. Right? So it's a kind of structure too. You can support that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I like what Carolyn says here in the chat, acceptance that things are what they are and not to be too hard on myself in the day um, if the day didn't turn out as planned. I like that. Yeah, I like that we're, you know, we can have this structure, but be fluid within it and um, have the acceptance that, you know, things don't always work out the way we plan and, and it's good to have, uh-oh. <laughs> Nick's got some wind over there, I see. <laughs> um, but yeah, and and Callie, I guess coping with art, travel, and music. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and Priscilla, pray and meditate. Yeah, no, I think those are all great, great things to have like in your back pocket as ways you cope. And how does everyone else uh, cope with with stress or if? Um, if you come up against a really challenging task or something maybe you don't want to do or that doesn't feel good, what's your coping mechanism right now? Go ahead, Joe. I think um, just being able to actually feel and sit with emotions, no matter how hard they are. Yeah. For me, especially as a guy, learning how to do that, you know, you know I grew up on the East Coast, go, go, go. <laughs> Um, so, you know, it's, it's hard for me to relate to some of that stuff of slowing down sometimes and, you know, realizing where things are coming from and, you know, kind of changing that to more of a positive outlook for things. Mm -hmm. I can definitely relate to that as well. Yeah, it's, um, it's, has anyone else found that that's kind of like a learning curve is learning to to slow down or accept things or not just be, you know, crazy busy and just like pushing the emotions to the side. Has anyone else had to learn that skill? I like what yep. Ryan says here. He says, think through it and break it down into smaller pieces that are manageable. I think that's a really good tip because it seems like when there's a lot of moving parts, um, it can be easy to get overwhelmed. So I like that, Ryan. Yeah, I do too. That's real good. Awesome. Well, Pris Priscilla also says exercise, listen to music, talk to a friend. Awesome. Yeah. So, so what is, when you think, when you saw the title of this, um, of our chat today, and we talked about finding calm with strength, and I'm going to add exercise to that as well. What is, what comes to your mind when you hear that, like finding calm with strength or with, exercise because we can go in two different directions with this let me know what you guys think so for me it's um 
strength and exercise gives me more energy to do all of those things that are on my list. So if I don't have the energy, if I feel like, oh my God, I have to take a nap or, you know, sleep in, or I just don't feel like doing it. I'm going to sit down and watch a movie and eat this bag of chips. Then I feel like crap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It's funny how we, the feedback loop can go in two ways. It could either go super positive where you're like, okay, I'm going to exercise. And then it gives me energy. There's a flood of hormones in a good way for repair. And then we could always also go the opposite way where you, you take a seat on the couch and then, you know, then comes the chips or the cookies. And then it's like lack of movement. And then it's, then that's kind of like a yuck kind of feeling as well. So yeah, it's interesting that you, you, and I think a lot of people also recognize that it's, it can be a positive and negative and exercise is always a choice as well as sitting on the couch. And it's just, how do you decide and getting over that barrier too sometimes? Um, let's see when we got in the chat here. Building on firmness in a situation and stability from within. Awesome. That's on that strength side. Awesome. Yeah. Priscilla. Carol, doing things that increase strength, also strengthen in my, uh, strengthening my bones, which helps me maintain health and decrease the risk of bone uh, breaking bones. Absolutely. I'm going to touch on that in a little bit. Yeah, that's awesome, Carol. Thank you. I, you know, I, I put a mind, body, and spirit because I do think yeah. that, you know, it's all connected and each one reinforces the other. Absolutely. Um, and the idea of movement has come up a lot uh, lately for me. And, in that like how I process through emotional spirit you know all that kind of stuff is it's more effective if I'm moving my, my body you know and in touch with that so Absolutely. the strength is all encompassing <laughs> yeah it is yeah strength really is encompass all encompassing like you said like it it takes into all of those pieces because if you think about somebody who uh let's think of somebody who is like really mentally strong how what are some characteristics of somebody you think of that are that is very mentally strong you can just write a few keywords in the chat if you'd like Stable, calm, resilient, anti-fragile, yeah, secure, adaptable, calm, reliable, absolutely. Yeah, so somebody who's strong in mind or mentally, yeah, it has all these really great things where resilient, stable, calm, secure, and I don't know about you, but when I just thought about that word, like, like mentally strong, I automatically sat up straight. I don't know if anyone else had that immediate reaction, but it's like when you step into that emotion, you then start taking on some of these characteristics. It's very interesting how, how the brain can shift that quickly, right? Um, and, and, and we're going to loop this all into some other stuff too, but when you start telling the brain or you start thinking in a way where you think like mentally strong thoughts or like, you know, I'm very reliable. I can structure my day. I'm going to flow and give you your, um, flow from one task to the other. You know, I can be adaptable in these situations, but all of that positive self-talk, uh, positive affirmations, whatever kind of verbiage you want to use. But anytime you start feeding yourself that information, it's really awesome because if you're not believing it, if you're not like really deep down believing it in the moment, you can always start just saying it or writing it down if that helps you more. And somehow it happens where it starts, your brain starts actually believing it more and becomes, you take on those, those characteristics. So that positive self-talk, even when you're not really feeling maybe you're strong in mind um, in the moment can be really beneficial. And then what is like strong, physically strong? Give me some characteristics for like physically strong. What do you think of? Keywords or anything to describe physically strong. Ripped, okay, ripped, awesome, Priscilla. 
I like what Joe said up above. I love having uh, good muscle mass too because it makes li daily life easier and I can be a bit more liberal with my eating with more muscle mass, absolutely. Good posture, toned, high endurance, yeah. Yeah, so somebody who is, is physically strong, you know, they have a foundation basically built where they can then either tap into that if they need to or kind of build from it. Um, and let's see what else we got. Healthy endurance, endurance is complete daily tasks. Yeah, absolutely. So physically strong and mentally strong. They really kind of are quite similar longevity. I like that, Joe. Yeah. Um, where you can, with physical strength, you can, you know, tap it. A lot of times, physically strong people are also very mentally strong. Um, and I kind of can weave a little bit of my story in here. Um, I worked in college athletics for 12 years and worked with athletes of all different levels, you know, you know, from your, your walk on, on athletes to a, a team who may never actually see the playing field, but would train in and out every day. Um, maybe they just weren't naturally gifted or, you know, weren't coach's favorite or something. And up until like athletes who were on course to go to the Olympics who are, you know, going to go next year. Um, but I've worked with athletes all, all along the spectrum. And the athletes who do really well have that that strong mind and strong body. It, it really works to, in in um, like synchronicity. Like if somebody has this dedication and they have this goal and they're willing to do anything for it, if it's you know win a championship or develop their brain to you know execute on a specific skill, they all have this extreme focus. And when an athlete do, does something really well and it becomes automatic, you know, we always talk about like getting in the zone, uh, but really is like this extreme focus. It's tunnel vision, just like uh, finding calm. And with meditation, you almost get into this like meditative state through exercise. So it's really, really exciting to see when you, you know, either in are in that state yourself or you see that kind of extreme calm uh, in an athlete, like in a playing field or what, whatever. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you've it's seen really, that a lot, right? Cause that's, uh, I have. I mean, you can talk a little bit about maybe your background. Cause I don't know. I don't think you shared a whole lot. So yeah. yeah. So, um, so for me, uh, I worked in college athletics as a strength and conditioning coach where I've worked with pretty much any and every team. But the last five years I spent at Stanford University with track and field athletes. So um, you, I, and I, I kind of embrace chaos. And for whatever reason, I like working with crazy people and crazy athletes and, and basically put myself in, in uncomfortable situations by choice, I figure, I feel like so a lot of times. Um, but it's a, I always find the, uh, the most reward when I can make all those chaotic situations like work where they don't, where the chaos doesn't exist anymore. Um, and it really, on the coach's part, it takes a lot of calm to, it's like, have you ever guys ever seen like the dog whisperer? You know how he gets that extreme calm when he's like training dogs, he goes into a house with like a psycho dog with it's like going off the, you know, and biting everyone or peeing everywhere. It's like that he comes in with this extreme calm and it's like, and just change the whole vibe of the room. Well, not that my athletes are for dogs like that because that's awful. But, but it's like when you have a um, chaotic situation and if you can come in and with structure, and hold people accountable and set some boundaries, you can then create calm in a very chaotic environment. So I often did that like in the weight room. And, um, and if you guys, if anyone's done a lot of athletics themselves or have um, tried to like lift extremely heavy things, most times you will succeed if you're actually in this like heightened but relaxed state. It's very interesting. Um, so I have actually competed in a bunch of sports myself at a, a pretty high level where um, 
in, I've competed in um, track and field. I was a shot putter and hammer thrower in college. And then um, also uh, Olympic weightlifting, powerlifting, strong woman. And then uh, the latest sport that I had added on to the, the list was uh, track cycling. So basically, um, I would race uh, fixed gear bikes, like single speed bikes with no brakes on a on a velodrome, that's basically a, a bank track. It's kind of like drag racing on a bicycle. Um, it's, it's a really crazy sport, but like the weightlifting, um, when you're at like extreme speeds, you have to be extremely relaxed, but like in a tensed, relaxed state, it's a very interesting concept. And it's kind of same thing. And when you're, when you're working, you know, day to day, or you're having a conversation with somebody, you can have a very heated conversation. But unless you are in like an open and more calm state, that person, other person on the other side of the conversation will just shut down. Has anyone ever encountered that where you're having kind of like a really heated conversation, but you're be able to cut, be calm and you're actually be able to work through a hard conversation with somebody? Yeah, good. I wasn't sure if we, we made that leap a little too quick <laughs> from exercise to, to uh, conversations. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've been in that situation and, um, you know, in some ways it reminds me of, of like combat too and training for combat. And, you know, that's your mind is open to like much more creativity and curiosity and you can see like, okay, how's this going and, you know, respond not so much from emotion as you know, from a place of openness. Absolutely. Yeah. And the opposite is, is, is interesting to observe too. If you're ever in having a discussion with somebody and you notice that person, the other person is shutting down or yourself, you're starting to shut down and just not be responsive. Like what are the emotions that are usually happening or what is physically happening in your body? But usually you kind of get like one of these, right? Yeah, you like, you know, close, physically close your body. Usually it's like a slouching of shoulders, maybe like a standing back. You physically start going into this state where um, less calm, more stress, things like that. I know when, I, when I have anxiety a lot, I have that tightening of the shoulders and I have um, like racing, yeah, and uh, just feeling really like just like I can't slow down. Like everything's yeah. really going fast. So exactly. I feel like that's. Um, and I like you know I'm not an athlete necessarily, but I like um, going hiking and um, doing like trail running. I think that's what I really find helps me kind of just deal with like just being alone in the forest. There's something about just being alone in the woods, yeah. you know, and just feeling the air and, and, you know, just running, uh, with the ground and just, yeah. Climbing yeah. rocks, all that stuff, like just being in the, and the, because then you can't think about all the problems too. I feel like yeah. you're so focused on like, okay, I got to make sure I don't trip on the rocks, you know, or something, or yeah. you're focused on like, how far have I got to go yet? Or how many more miles is this? Or there's just so many things I think that you're thinking of in that moment. And I think that's probably have, ha you have to do that with strength training, right? With, with things that Absolutely. you teach. Um, it keeps you really focused on that, right? Right. Yeah. And that's, and that's where a lot of people struggle too, is especially like the college athletes I worked with and, and even um, people in the community that I've trained also. Um, it's the hardest part is getting them to kind of block out everything else that's going on and just ex execute on the task at hand. Um, but once you learn that skill, you can apply that skill to anything. Um, and it's funny when, when I'm coaching somebody to, um, to, uh, attack like a big 
a big lift or they're going to set a personal best like or try to lift a weight they've never lifted before um i'll let them get super amped up and you know get a little crazy or whatever so the the emotions are flowing but the first thing the next thing i tell them is i tell them to stand behind whatever area they're in like if it's a weightlifting platform or a bench press i tell them to close their eyes I tell them to take a deep breath. I tell them to watch what they're going to do in their head. So we use visualization. And then I tell them before you sit down, step on the platform, wherever, whatever lift you're gonna do, I tell them just to clear their mind. So it's like that, you know, you're finding calm, you're kind of getting in this meditative state, but you've just executed in your head. So if you can kind of shut out the, all your noise and just find that calm for a second and then step on the platform and just go for it and let your you know shut your brain off and just let your body execute most times they'll hit the app that will hit the lift but if they let themselves um step on on the platform thinking about 10 things they're supposed to do right and and maybe like what their friend's gonna do or how how excited coach is gonna be when you know they make it they never get like just too much going on. There's no calm, there's no relaxation in there and their body doesn't execute. Um, but if you can find a little bit of that calm right before you go into something, it's really helpful. Uh, and I know a lot of uh, speakers also do this, like people who speak on stage or if they're going into a presentation, they'll do the first, that same thing. Um, I've heard lots of people who will do like a bunch of push-ups or like some burpees or something right before they step on stage to get that, like, get that adrenaline going. But then they take like a second and totally bring down their emotional state where they find this calm, you know, maybe like tap in a little to like what they, you know, you know, let the, you know, up above and impression them a little bit of what you know what their audience needs to hear like get a little meditation in and then they go on and execute an amazing speech or whatever lecture or something so it's it's interesting how you can take skills from athletics and from meditation and kind of make them all come together so i always find that that very interesting and it took me a while to figure out how to tell people to do that because um as a high school athlete, um, that was just something I always naturally did myself. I actually, um, so I have three sisters and um, I'm the oldest and I'm the only one that was not a ballerina, believe it or not. Um, so uh, I was always coached up as a kid to, you know, uh, given cues or positive things about like going on stage and, and um, you know, dancing around our house was pretty normal or, you know, my sisters also sing and they're actresses and things. So, and my mom was a ballerina. So it was often like I was coached up as a young kid to, you know, you know, perform on stage and like find like calm and vis visualize like the stage and this and that. And because that's, that's what my mom knew and, and that's how she told me. And then like when I started throwing the shot put in high school that was the same kind of cues I used and then sure enough there's all sports psychology that tells you the same thing so it's really kind of interesting um yeah does anyone have any questions around the process of using any kind of visualization or uh applying any of those techniques to their daily life yeah I just threw my question in the chat but essentially it's just you know do you have your athletes use visualization outside of the gym. Um, I've heard about that a little bit, you know, just curious of your, your experience with that. Yeah. Um, I've had, I've had athletes use it and I've told, coached kids up to use it. Um, kind of, they're going into a big exam. Um, and it's, I, I use it usually in the same conversation when I'm like, you should not, pull an all-nighter you should go to sleep and let your brain recover basically before going you know before that test you're not going to do better by you know not sleeping because then you're just hitting exhaustion and you know your brain isn't firing um kind of the next thing i wanted to get into is a little bit of the, the sciencey stuff but um exercise helps with uh, neuroplasticity, it's called. And it's like brain healing and growing, basically. But 
when you let your brain rest and your body rest, there's a flood of hormones and a flood of these nutrients that comes in and heals the body. So if you're going into an exam even and you haven't slept or doing anything else for that matter, you're not hitting that recovery. You're not getting that flood of good hormones and nutrients to your body that basically heal. So um, as we're having that conversation about you need to sleep, um, we also usually, it's usually around exam time and, you know, because, <clears throat> excuse me, because, you know, the last school I was at was Stanford, those kids would also, you know, very, they had no problem sitting still for like five or eight hours and just studying, you know, I've been at other schools that's, you know, totally opposite end of the spectrum, but, you know, they naturally would sit still and study for hours on end. So, you know, we would teach them to sleep, but then we would also teach them you have to get up and move. Like you have to move around. You can't just sit still for eight hours um, because not only is your body, you know, going to be in this like, you know, lower energy state, you've got to pump some blood through your muscles. And then, you know, we also need you to perform at practice in a day or two or something. So it was also like, you've got to move. And then we also use the visualization techniques to, you know, visualize that you're going to, do well on a test and um, test and and then you know and then there's all those positive things that you kind of usually go along with meditation. You're like, okay, you close your eyes and you're like, okay, I'm gonna get an A plus on this test. It's gonna be easy. And those are all those positive affirmations. And if you're into manifesting, that's kind of goes along with that. And it's you know it's tricking your brain that you can do it. And it's those positive things to make yourself believe that you do have that strength inside to execute and do well at something. So yeah, if we use kind of lots of different techniques and, and I feel like, I feel like this is something also that I don't think it's unique just to athletics or to my experience. I feel like some of it is, is things that we do naturally. Does anyone, has anyone ever used either visualization or kind of the positive affirmations, positive self-talk just naturally with that before they were ever told to do it? Has anyone experienced that? Or is it always, it has been active? Caroline, go ahead. Oh, I was starting to type um, that I've used visualization and affirmations like before doing public speaking um and like before some interviews i don't think it was natural though i just you okay. know i learned about doing this and then i like before interviews put sticky notes around like my mirror when i was getting ready the night before to remind myself that i'm awesome and i'm gonna impress these people it was more like a um a, um confidence building exercise for me yeah. um getting rid of the anxiety like i knew that you know the the task going into it was still going to be, you know, um, not easy, but I, I just needed to, it gave me that confidence to go in it and feel good about talking about myself and accomplishing everything. And yeah, and the public speaking part of it was really, uh, that's a whole other story, but yeah, <laughs> so not, not naturally, but just things that I've picked up along the way. And yeah, I, I don't remember exactly where though. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, it's funny. I feel like these are like all little tidbits we probably hear, you know, here and there, like throughout life or from different people. <clears throat> so it's it's interesting how when we need them, also, oftentimes they just kind of become automatic. It's really nice. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, so let's see. So kind of one other thing I want to touch on and then we'll kind of get into, you know, we'll transition to a little activity and movement. Um, but <clears throat> is this like positive self-talk and kind of the, the positive affirmations that we can do. So how do, does anyone use them currently either daily or actively has like self-talk kind of a, a habit that they have? Does anyone want to share? Joe, you have something you use? I see a head nod. I don't know if you do. Yeah, you don't um, every night I play a money mindset script. Um, ah, nice. It's just something I recorded just to get me over the whole um, 
attitude that money is a finite resource and stuff like that and think more with an attitude of um abundance so you know i, I play play that every night before i go to sleep i love that that's great yeah uh, joe what what is that is that something that's accessible I just, we find? Myself just saying different okay. uh, things about money that i don't you know that i want to believe but you know, i've always had a problem believing so you know it kind of just helps get that you know, through my head. And sometimes I'm honestly not listening as much, but I, I mean, I just do while I'm brushing my teeth right before I go to sleep. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I've, I've done um, all sorts of different things. I'm sure there's more out there, but I've, I've done a lot of different uh, types of affirmations, um, you know, power patterns. Uh, I've written the, written a letter every morning, you know, to myself and my higher power, you know, thanking or kind of gratitude letters and stuff like that. Um, so, and it's all, I've, I've noticed that it all helps. So, yeah. but I, I do kind of flow between different ones, you know, and switch it up every once in a while. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I like that. Just like kind of setting intentions, using gratitude, prayer. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like um, like I grew up in a Catholic house. Like we were we were raised, you know, pretty dedicated Catholic. And um, yeah, prayer was always something that was always emphasized. And and it's interesting, like um, it's just that 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 silence that comes along with prayer that you you can then think and you're you're showing gratitude and you're, you're almost thinking like outside of yourself and like, you know, not just like how you can have a bigger impact, but like what else is going around you, which, which I think is so great with finding calm and meditation, visualization, and like positive affirmations, like all of these things are all so similar because it's just a matter of like kind of taking down our emotional state becoming open, being, being grateful for what we're, we're given. And then, and then, you know, having a quiet mind for a little bit. I think that no matter kind of what strategy or, or um, kind of what school of thought you belong to, I feel like there's such a, a big um, commonality with so much and, and we can use it to pretty much apply to anything in life. And, and I know right now, a lot of, a lot of people talk about breath work and just like the power of breathing deeply and calmly. It's, it's all the same. And it's like, whatever technique works for you, I think is so important to recognize. And it's something that you always have with you too. So, which is really fun. I oh, can yeah, I like, go ahead. I can, Deb. No, I was just going to say, I can tell you from last year, I hired a trainer, um, about a little more than a year ago to help me get stronger because I had signed up to take a kayaking class to learn how to kayak. Cause I hadn't, I was terrified of like kayaking, but I wanted to like do it. So I ha I was taking a course and then I decided to be after that, it was weird, but I decided to be a river rafting guide. So I started oh, wow. to go through six weeks of training and through that process, I was, had this mindset of that I'm not strong enough. Like I had, before I even got the first time, before I even got on the river, I was so afraid because I'm like, I'm not going to be able to, you know, to do this. I'm just not strong enough. And then when you get in there and then you're doing it, um, and then you're realizing, oh, okay. Like it's not that hard. So then when you, when you reflect back on the past, now that I think of it about it a year later in the beginning of the season, I was, um, terrified on the river and I was in my kayak and I'm like afraid of every wave <laughs> that comes by. And then as the summer goes and I get more familiar with those waves and then I start to enjoy the, the entire experience by the end of the season, I was like, Oh, it's over now. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so like, just, I think the, um, you know, doing something that's scary, uh, you know, and building those, um, building up those skills of, and breaking the mindset of like, I can't do this. This isn't something that's, that I'm, I'm not strong enough. And then versus being like, Oh, like six months later, like, look at all that. I, who, who knew <laughs> a year yeah. ago, you would have said, would have said, Oh, you're going to be a river acting guy. I would look at them like they were crazy. I'm like, what are you talking about? 
<laughs> no, it's just, it's just interesting because I feel like we have so much more ability than we think we do. Sometimes our, we get our, we get our own way kind of thing is what they say. So I think the mindset has to be a part of the strength building, having the mindset. So, and I do uh, have affirmation cards that I use um, on a daily basis um, nice. that I keep around my house to kind of keep me focused and remembering what, um, you know, what I want to do and how I want to get there. Yeah. So I, just oh, I like those up. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Okay. So awesome. This has been great. So let's do this. We're going to move into some movement. Who's, who wants to do some exercise with me? Deb, Nick, Donna. Okay. Anyone who'd like to join is more than welcome to join in. Um, and one of the cool things, I don't know if anyone else does this either consciously or unconsciously, but sometimes when I'm in a bad mood or I just am stuck in a rut. One of the things I do is I, I tell my, I like, I put my positive affirmations with exercise. So I've got a little whiteboard here. So as we're going things, I can, I can read them out and tell you also. So we're going to think of three different things that we want to say during, um, during our little circuit that we're going to do. So the one, my favorite is I can do anything. So that we're going to start with that one. So, but I want to know, let's, we've got to come up with two more positive affirmations. So you guys, let's list a few in the chat. We're going to do that. I can do anything is our first one. Let's see what we've got. I am a warrior, like that. I am enough. I like that. We're going to do I am enough. That's, I like that one a lot. Three to four words is usually the, the key. We don't need anything too complicated. I am enough. You are stronger than you know. I like that one. I am a warrior. Okay. So, okay, so I can do anything. I am enough. Sorry, you're actually in my, in my teaching classroom right now, so we're going in teacher mode. Um, <laughs> um, but then let's, then let's do that. Well, the last one will be, you can, you can fill in the blank. I am, and then you can say warrior, strong, um, a kick-ass businesswoman, whatever you want to write. So we'll, we'll do those three. And then I'm going to, <laughs> badass, love it. Okay, I'm gonna put in a little, let's see, give me one second here. Maybe if, um, does anyone else wanna share, what kind of exercise or things like that do you guys enjoy doing? It could be anything, cause I'm gonna like type a few things in here. So you guys kind of chat for a second. I like going for a run. I do running on Front Street, which is a uh, by the river here in Harrisburg. So I do that. Um, I do some, not that I like them, but I do crunches. Nice. Crunches. <laughs> yeah, Donna, don't make fun of my crunches. I liked it. It was cute. <laughs> what do you do, Donna? Because I know you uh, do a bunch. I do Pilates <laughs> and I thought it was cute. Pilates, I like to hike. I like to walk every day and listen to podcasts while I walk fast. I like to do some HIIT workouts um, and I need to do more strength workouts. So that's something I actually need to do more of is the strength. Nice. Yeah. I like strength workout just because it, um, I feel like there's more blood being pumped through yeah. things. And um, what I was meant to get circle back to before um, something that Carol mentioned um, is the, the positive um, effect that actually like loading your body with weight has, uh, especially for older people. And as we age, um, I actually like loading weight through your spine, especially. So a little trick that, you know, for older people and 
young female athletes, one of the things that is super beneficial is to actually put weight on your back, either a bar or like you can even do like a, a sandbag or a backpack or something like that. But weight going through your spine actually has a really strong hormonal response for testosterone which is a great healing hormone. Um, and when we're looking to um, help older people increase their bone density, a, biggest, a big thing that, you know, once you build somebody up to uh, being able to handle loads safely is loading through the spine because that, that spinal response is really strong and then you can help people improve um, bone density. And also uh, fem young female athletes, um, not necessarily really young, but my college freshmen is as soon as they became coordinated enough and had enough core strength, we, we would throw a bar on their back and start just loading the spine to get faster results. It's a, it's quite interesting how well it works. What else we got here? Jumping jack, squat, cycling, walking, yoga, pio, jogging, spin, Zumba. I love it, Priscilla. Body weight, Nick, push-ups, pull-ups, squats, burpees. Awesome. Awesome, Marissa, I started using my Wii Fit. Yay! <laughs> Love the Wii Fit. Yeah, really well for a variety of exercises. How fun. Uh, Joe, I'd love how it feel after a good lift. Okay, good spin as well. Awesome. Okay, cool. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna rotate my screen. If everyone will uh, take a second, if you need to organize your space, you need a little bit of room. We're gonna do um, we're gonna do a few things just to get our body moving first. But then we we are gonna do burpees optional. If you don't want to do them, you don't have to. Um, but if you have a room to do like a plank on the ground, that'd be great. So basically, kind of if you've got like a a four by four, a four by six little area. Um, go ahead and find it, and I'm gonna switch around my area too. I just moved my table. There you go. So I've got the space now. Yay. And I know that I was saying on our call yesterday about I don't wanna do burpees, but I will do the burpee because I feel like I'm gonna be excited with the positive words. Yeah. And we're going to do them. We're going to do them slow. We're not going to do them fast. Okay. Oh, good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a workout program lately that's had a lot of slow burpees and I'm like, oh, I like these much better because <laughs> you hit like a plank in the middle. It gives, it gives yourself a little, you know, space. To, let's see. There we go. Wow, Ka Callie, you're like, I grew up on a mountain and used to put rocks in my backpack, but lately I've just been walking and hiking. That's, that's, that's pretty crazy. Awesome. That's rocks in your backpack. That's awesome. So I will, along that kind of theme, so um, when I was in high school, my uh, high school track coach, he always thought it would be a great idea if I worked, uh, I went to like New Hampshire, because I grew up in Connecticut. He's like, you should go to New Hampshire during the summer or up in the mountains and be the person that runs the equipment and food up and down the mountain to the trip, to like the cabins and stuff. I'm like, like, I don't know if I... I mean, yeah, I get super strong and fit, but I'm like, I never did do it, but uh, I could see Joe that being a little side side hobby job for you. I'm sure you've done something similar <laughs> up in your wheelhouse. Awesome. Okay. So this is going to be our little, little workout. Uh, we're going to do a few little movement things before to, to get warmed, warmed up, but we're going to kind of combine, uh, we're just going to do body weight stuff. Um, so then no one needs any equipment or anything. So first thing we're going to do is let's, uh, we're just going to start by jogging in place a little bit. Make sure you don't have anything around you. I've got dumbbells and things, so I'm just going to shift that to the inside. All right, so we're just going to, let's just jog in place. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah, and feel free if you don't want to jog, you can just like step two. That's always good. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, Donna, you're getting into it. I love it. <laughs> it's hot at your house, I'm sure. <laughs> good. All right, everyone pause. Let's do a couple arm circles. Let's get those arms moving. Awesome. All right, other way. There we go. Good. Good. All right. So let's go. Let's go legs wide. 
Let's see, there we go. Can you guys kind of see me? Good, hopefully. All right, so we're gonna go legs wide and we're just kind of kind of sit, sit back into like kind of a side lunge each side. So starting to warm up a little bit. There you go, kind of sitting your hips back as you go. Kind of back, alternating side to side. There you go, good. There we go, like it. All right, everyone can stop, good. All right, so we're gonna grab a knee and we'll just give it a good pull straight up. There we go. Good. Yeah, nice. What is that? Right, let's get over here. What's that, Deb? I'm like losing my balance and hitting the plants. <laughs> and since we were all sitting, let's get in like a little bit of a lunge. Like it could be a, just a small one. And I want you to think about pushing your hips forward. So you're stretching the front of your leg, your hip flexor. We'll just pause there for a second. Good, and let's just switch the other side. Good, we'll just switch, we'll do one more each side. Good. Awesome, other side, last one. Marissa said, we're in Connecticut. I grew up in Northford. I grew up in Southbury with all the other breweries, Waterbury, Danbury, to where I grew up. Good, all right. Everyone warm-ish? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Nick, I love the dance. <laughs> okay, so first thing we're gonna do is a jab, jab, hook. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, have like a staggered stance. Let's go ahead and put our right foot in front of our left. There we go, kind of equal weight on both sides. And we're gonna start by we're gonna go right arm, like we're gonna punch something. And then we're gonna go left arm. Actually, yeah, and then we're gonna go right arm, we're, we're gonna do like a hook. So a hook is like, you're gonna punch out and then kind of away elbow, yeah, there we go. So we're gonna go jab right, yep, right straight ahead, jab left, straight ahead, and then we're gonna go hook with the right side. Yeah, there we go, we've done this before, good. So we're gonna go jab, jab, hook. So jab, jab, hook, good. Jab, jab, hook. I am enough. All right, say it with me. I am enough. Yeah, one more. I, I am, am enough. Yeah, like good job. Woo. All right, let's switch our legs. I like it. This is good stuff. All right, left arm first. So we're gonna go jab left, jab right, hook left. All right. All right, so you jab. Guys, you guys should put, you should, uh, Unmute, unmute yourself if you want to yeah, like unmute yourself. Come on and say your things. Yeah, let's see. Can we unmute everyone? I want to hear you because I feel like that'll ramp the like, that'll I think so too. All right, ready? All right, left arm. Jab, jab, hook. Okay. Jab, jab, hook. Yeah, lean into it. Good. All right. I, I am no. Yeah. No. I, I am yeah, one more. I, I am, am a warrior. warrior. Yeah, love it. Awesome. That's so I'm good. I'm home here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the high five. Woo. So good. Okay, next one. So we're gonna do, so we're gonna get feet a little wetter than shoulder width. All right, we're gonna do like a half squat. So we're just gonna like Squat down like halfway where your butt sits back, chest is up nice and tall. All right. All right, so we're gonna squat, and then as we come up, I want you to kick your leg forward. Oop. Yeah, it's a little balance. So we're gonna squat, kick. Yeah, so you wanna pull your knee up, and then extend the leg. Squat, as if you're gonna like kick a door down. There you go, squat, kick. I can do I can do anything was the first one we were gonna say. Yeah, we can do that one. This one. Yeah. I can do anything. I, I can do anything. Yeah, I can do anything. Let's do two more each side. I can do I can anything. Do anything. I can do anything. 
I think awesome. this is awesome. I can do anything. Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right, so if you can tell, we're kind of doing a little bit of cardio. We're going big to small muscles. So now we're going to do, um, so oh, this is actually supposed to be bent over T's, Y's, and W's. So this is where we get to breathe a little bit. So you're going to make like a slightly bent over kind of tabletop position. Okay. Okay. And our arms are going to be like a T. All right, so we're going to be bent over. So our first one is going to be a T. So our hands are going to be right in front of us, like this. And then we're going to bring them up and they're squeeze our shoulder blades and you're going to put your thumbs up to the sky. So we're going to do, we'll do three T's. One, two, yeah, three. Good. Now we're going to make like a Y, like YMCA. We're still going to be in that position. So bend over, thumbs up, and we're going to make a Y. So one, yep, yeah, stay down, Deb. Two, three. There you go, good. And big thing, we're strengthening the upper back with no weight. So you want to really squeeze those shoulder blades. So let's do T and Y together. We'll alternate. So we'll do one T. One T. And then one Y. Y. Good. Now we're going to add a W. So W, basically, we drop our elbows and make like a W. All right, so drop the elbows. We're going to go W. So let's w. do three of those. One, two, three. Yeah, squeezing those shoulder blades. Whoa. Good, nice job. We right. say in the I, I was, I'm a superstar. Yeah, let's do that. I'm a superstar. So we're gonna do, <laughs> or that's my word. You guys pick your own words. Yeah, we'll pick our own. Two T's, uh, two Y's, and two W's. So two of each. Ready? All right. You can say whatever you want. So let's start twos. Go ahead. One. I am strong. Two. All right. Y's. One. I am awesome. <laughs> w one. I am super awesome. Awesome. Good. Feel how's our upper back feeling? Are we feeling feeling good? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Now let's see. I'm gonna tilt this slightly. All right. All right. I'm gonna demonstrate a burpee, and then you guys can all either follow, watch, or just do the squat part. So <laughs> your choice. So with a burpee, we're going to do these nice and slow together. So you're going to start standing. You're basically going to go down where your hands come to the ground. Feet jump back into like a push-up position. And then we're going to jump the feet back in and stand up. All right. So if you need a clear space, go for it. Otherwise, come with me. So we're going to go down. Do back. you say a word each time you move? Uh, we will once we get the movement down. Okay. Yep. And then jump in and up. So down, back, in, up. This is where I like that I can do anything. So we're going to do it. So down is going to be I, back is can, two is in, and anything is up. Ready? So we're going to do three together. I, I, I can, two, anything. anything. I, I can, can do anything. anything. I can do anything. anything. Woo. Yeah, team, good job. You guys are awesome. So good. Okay, and uh, we're gonna finish up now. We're gonna do. Um, we're gonna do a. Well, let's just do like twenty second, a twenty second plank. But what I like about planks or holding atop of a push-up is this is a great time to do like a little gratitude. Hmm. You can, you know, often it's you're struggling a little bit. And um, if you're talking, you're hard breathing hard like me. Um, but this is where you can find a, li a little bit of quiet in your workout. So when I want to get down either on their elbows, you'll see me in a second, or on the top of a push-up position, I just want you to either say a few positive things to yourself or um, something you're grateful for today. And we'll finish up with that and we'll, uh, I'll count to 20. Sounds good? Okay, all right. Hi, Mom. <laughs> all right, so nice straight back, nice flight back. You can either be on your elbows or you can be at the top of a push up your clock. All right, 20 seconds. And say whatever you're thankful for. I'm thankful for Allison. 
Hey, I'm thankful for the sunshine today. Um, I'm grateful for time with family. Yay. All right, last five seconds. Grateful for fine calm here. Yay, me too. I'm thankful for you guys and done. All right, come on up. Woo. <laughs> Awesome. I did wear my strong shirt for you guys today. It's this girl lifting lots of weight. All right. Nice. <laughs> How's everybody feeling? How do we feel it? What do we Thumbs think? Up. Thumbs up. Yeah. Everyone feel a little more energized and, and happy. Yeah. Yep. Ready good. to focus on some work. Oh, so it's good. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Get some good focus. Awesome. Well, I hope you all, and excuse me, enjoyed this today and got a lot out of it. I know oh, I so had fun. Drop your uh, uh, website or give us your contact info. So if anybody wants to reach out to you after this, they can do that. Cause I know you have some things coming up, right? Yeah, I've got a couple of things. I, I do, uh, I do a little business coaching. I, uh, my signature course is for strength and conditioning coaches, but I do like a bunch of leadership training. Awesome. Um, She's going to drop those. Uh, you're going to drop a link there in the chat. Yes. And then, um, if you guys want to connect later with her, you can. Um, we are going to have, we're launching the Find Calm Here community. A couple people asked about the recordings of these live events. So our launch, our official launch is in June, but we decided to do a pre-launch special for everybody who's live right now. So if you guys want to get into our community early and you're not already in the Find Calm Here community, you can actually, I'm going to get a link in the community chat right now for you guys that you can get in there for $10 less than what the price is going to be when it launches in June. So it's going to be $49 and you guys can get in for $39 if you sign up today. So I'm going to put that in there and then just see if anybody, I know Marissa and Priscilla, um, can you guys see the link that I put in there? Yep, I can see it. Okay. Um, if you guys want to contact me afterwards, if you have any more questions about it, uh, certainly feel free to reach out either on the Find Calm Here Facebook page, or I know um, both of you guys know me. Well, Priscilla is friends with me on Facebook. Marissa, you are friends with Leah, and you're, you're welcome to friend me as well. Does anybody have any questions? Um, the recordings are going to be in that community, so that's how you access them. And uh, like I said, we're offering that free deal for anybody who's on our live calls from now until, um, till June. So does anybody have any last words or questions, takeaways, things that you want to start doing? Oh, well, this was fun. And, um, I will tell you if, uh, if anyone has, so I, I'm a collector of odd jobs, it seems these days. Um, <laughs> so, uh, my latest job that I'm adding to my awesome life is uh, I teach I teach English for Chinese kids at early in the morning uh, but I've also just added a new uh, teaching platform where it's it's basically students that are primarily English speaking um, and who are either homeschooled or home right now and I'm actually going to be uh, leading a, a summer track camp on this platform and uh, offering fitness classes for kids as like uh, as PE. So if anyone has kids, feel free to email me and I can send you a uh, free $20 credit on the website. Uh, and you could have your kids come take my, my fitness class or they can take like, you know, a fun, I don't know, chemistry class or something that's basically anything and everything. And then if, um, if anyone themselves is like, Ooh, I'd like to teach kids something that I'm passionate about, uh, email me and I can uh, also tell you all about that. Cause it's a, a pretty, pretty fun, exciting opportunity. And, um, I'm also going to be coaching up teachers on how to be great virtual teachers. So, um, so yeah, let me know, but this is fun. Thank you all. Cool. Well, thank you, thank you so much, thank Allison, you. for being here. Yeah. Nick is going to be our, our speaker for next week. Um, so if you guys are around next week, it's a fine calm with adventure. Nick, you would just want to give a shout out about that uh, next week? Yeah, just a real brief overview. It goes much deeper than um, adventuring in the outdoors, although that is part of the, uh, the thread that I pull into it. Um, and essentially, you know, I, I coach people to uh, choose their adventure in their life and live it. So um, we'll be talking all about that. 
Awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a really fun one. Anybody yeah. else want to share any t- takeaways before we end the day? Yeah. So I'm definitely going to start using affirmations more um, in my daily life as far as like daily goal setting and visualizations. I think the goal and visual goal setting and visualizations can kind of go hand in hand and um, just setting forward forward my intentions for the day uh, before I start getting busy in things. And that definitely will include um, my workout regimen, which has very much suffered in the past couple of months. So um, I appreciate this. This I think this is going to be very helpful. Um, I'm going to go out for a run this afternoon, which I've never done like out in the world. I usually just do it on the treadmill. I'm not much of a runner, but I'm going to go try it and I'm going to visualize how successful I'm going to be on that little trail today. Yes, (laughs) good. Awesome, Carolyn. That's amazing. I, yeah, I'm going to be using these. I'm going to start doing some burpees. I'm going to challenge myself to do, uh, like five burpees a day, maybe every other day. I don't know. I'll figure it out, but I'm going to do it and use the affirmation because I really think that would, that's the only way I'm going to actually be consistent with it. I think that I'll start practicing that this week. Awesome. Good. All right. Well, thanks all for joining us. I hope to see y'all next week. Uh, Next Saturday is our Find Calm with Adventure. I put the uh, Find Calm Here websites in there. If you want to get more information on Find Calm Here community, you can get on our wait list for the launch in June with the Find Here uh, community. If you, like I said, if you'd like to get in today, I put that link in there for early access. And uh, Yeah, if you have questions, let me know. I appreciate it. Everybody, if you want to just wave and say bye as you uh, head on out there, I'd uh, greatly appreciate you. And I thank you for your time and have a great day. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good job. Hey, thanks. See you later. later.